Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. Now this is really making me nervous. Are you some kind of religious fanatic? It seems to me you may be taking this ultimate love and loving the ultimate a little too seriously. No one talks like this anymore. This is the 21st century. Worship, whatever that means, is something superstitious people engaged in a long time ago. Actually, that which you value at the center of your life makes all the difference in how you live your life. What you most love and most value is simply what you serve or worship. Think of this like practicing for a school play, except the performing stage is your daily life. We all participate in this practice, whether we choose to be aware of it or not. I love my dog. Of course you do. I also love my house and my garden and my friends. Of course you do. And these are healthy practices for a human being. Yet, we have to consider the implications of loving something finite as the ultimate reality in our lives. I must consider the counterfeits, the substitutes for reality, with which I am consorting. Where in my life am I loving the material, temporal, and impermanent as a substitute for the ultimate? I think I am more comfortable loving things I can see and hear and touch and taste and smell. Aren't we all? Loving an ultimate reality that is infinite, invisible, and interiorly accessed requires me to go to a different place in consciousness. I know it is the 21st century, but perhaps wisdom from the 14th century cloud of unknowing can provide some guidance. It is the infinite object alone that can fully satisfy the hunger and longing of our being, which, transformed by its own permission, enables us to embrace it by love. This reality cannot be grasped by humans or any being by knowledge, but can be embraced by love. For the intellect of all beings is too small to comprehend infinite reality as it is in itself. Try to understand this point. Rational creatures possess two principal faculties, a knowing power and a loving power. No one can fully comprehend the uncreated infinite reality with one's knowledge. But each one, in a different way, can grasp this reality fully through love. Truly, this is the unending miracle of love, that one loving person, through their love, can embrace ultimate reality, whose being fills and transcends the entire creation. And this marvelous work of love goes on forever. For the one we love is timeless. Whoever has the gifted insight to appreciate the truth of what I am saying, let them take my words to heart. For to experience this love is the joy of endless life, while to lose it is endless torment. Now do you see why I rouse you to this interior relational work? You would have taken to it naturally had you and humanity not chosen a relationship of separateness and disunity. For humanity was created to love and everything else was created to make love possible. Nevertheless, by the work of contemplative love, humanity will be healed. Failing in this work, one sinks deeper into estrangement and further from the unity of reality. But by persevering in this work, 
one moves beyond separation and grows in intimacy with the infinite wholeness. And now we come to the difference between the contemplative work and its counterfeits, such as daydreaming, fantasizing, or subtle reasoning. These originate in a conceited, curious, or romantic mind, whereas the blind stirring of love springs from a sincere and humble heart. Pride, curiosity, and daydreaming must be sternly checked if the contemplative work is to be authentically conceived in singleness of heart. God is a kind of a code word that means different things to different people. It also means devotion to. Uh, so everybody has a God in the sense that you're devoted to something. Uh, so it is kind of important to define what you're devoted to. So I'm using the word reality to help me. Also the awesome and the mysterious land <laughs> I'm having to live in as a, other words to, to talk about the God that is my God or my devotion. Reality is mysterious to the finite human mind, yet our elemental conscious being can experience this mysteriousness. Though this absolute mysterious reality is beyond our mental reach, this mysteriousness is discernible. It is commonly seen and known. Mysterious reality is not some faraway idea that we have not yet thought up. Mysterious reality is like a truck crashing into the side of our car. Mysterious reality reaches us through some snake biting our toe, some cancer growing in our bowels. Mysterious reality reaches us through a whole host of pleasant things as well. Reality touches us in the miracle of having been born at all. Reality comes to us through the gift of our amazing body and its intricate functioning. Reality is the entire mystery of empowered actualities that we cannot avoid. There's no excuse for making substitutes for reality and then forgetting that they are substitutes and thereby entering into the illusion that these substitutes are reality, or using these substitutes as our ground for fighting against reality. By fighting against reality, we mean viewing reality as our enemy because reality does not operate by our values. Violent destruction is as much a part of reality as surprising creation. A megastar violently explodes, a volcano, flood, storm, or fire destroys a whole town or city. A cheetah runs down an antelope and eats it. A band of humans slaughter another band of humans. People often protest that any reality that empowers or permits such violence cannot be good enough, by our standards, to deserve our worship. So we create some other being to be our good, our God, our worship. Perhaps we imagine that this self-created being is real enough and powerful enough to interfere with the course of nature on our behalf. We cannot live without a cause, without some object of devotion, some center of worth, something on which we rely for meaning. In this sense, all humans have faith. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Where you center your life is what you worship. Center your life on food, and food becomes your God. Center your life on music, and music is what you begin to worship. The same thing is true for sex, sleep, alcohol, entertainment, work, and a multitude of other potential idols. I am seeking the real thing. I am awakening to the reality that loving that which is most real delivers me to the possibility of an authentic life. 
while loving substitutes for reality leaves me confused, distracted, and drowning in inauthenticity. I want the real. Journey with me on this path less traveled, 